Good day, everyone. Today we will be discussing, tracing, and describing the importance of water cycle. Together, let's make learning science fun and easy. The water part of the wa the Earth is called hydrosphere or water sphere. This covers three fourths of its surface. Therefore. Water covers a larger area of its surface than land. That is why the Earth is called the Blue Planet. Water gives the Earth its characteristics of blue color as seen from outer space. Water continuously moves in the Earth's surface in a process called water cycle. The water cycle has four processes. These are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. Evaporation The sun heats up bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, and oceans. Water turns to vapor when heated and goes up into the air. Plants help in putting water back to the air. Plants remove water from their bodies through transpiration. The water that leaves plants' bodies goes to the air too. Condensation Happens when Cool air changes water vapor back to liquid water and form clouds in the sky. This is the opposite of evaporation. Precipitation Happens when too much water has condensed. Clouds get heavy and water falls as rain. This is precipitation. In some countries, water falls as sleet, snow, or hail. Collection When it rains, water goes back to the bodies of water. Some water also goes to the soil. The water in the soil is absorbed by the plant. Once collected, it goes to the bodies of water and undergoes the process of evaporation. On the other hand, water absorbed by the plants undergoes transpiration and will start the cycle again. Although there is a continuous cycle of water, you might wonder if there will come a time when we will run out of water. Do you know about 97% of the water found in our surrounding is salty? Thus, only 3% of this water is fresh or potable. This very small amount of fresh water is 67% locked in the form of ice mainly found in Greenland and Antarctic. Therefore, only about 1% of fresh water is found in rivers, lakes, ponds, and in the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. Let's do this! How important I am in the environment? First, study the illustration of a water cycle below. Ask any members of your family, especially the older ones, to have a brainstorming about it. Share ideas about the importance of water to man, animals, and plants. Write your ideas in a bond paper. What does the illustration show? The illustration shows the cycle of water.
what is its importance to man, plants, animals. The water cycle is important to all life on earth for many reasons. All living organisms require water and the water cycle describes the process of how water moves through the planet. Plants wouldn't grow without precipitation. All this process sustain life and create the ecosystems around us. Can life and other environmental processes continue without the water cycle? Why or why not? No, this process sustain life. A prolonged drought can destroy a population of plants or a certain species. All living organisms require water. Do you think balance in nature will be achieved if water cycle processes are not complete? Why do you think so? No, we rely on all these processes to help maintain life of all living organisms on our planet. It is essential that the water we have access to is treated with care so that we may conserve what is available to us. Why is water cycle important? Water cycle is important because it provides us a potable water to drink, to make plants and animals to grow, and it sustains life. Let's do this. Complete the concept map to show the correct cycle of water. As the sun rises, water from the oceans and land evaporates and changes to water vapor through the process of evaporation. Water vapor from the atmosphere changes to liquid water again to, to form clouds in the process called condensation. Precipitation happens when too much water has condensed, clouds get heavy, and water falls as rain. This is precipitation. In some countries, water falls as sleet, snow, or hail. Collection. When it rains, water goes back to the bodies of water. Some water also goes to the soil. The water in the soil is absorbed by the plant. Once collected, it goes to the bodies of water and undergoes the process of evaporation. Let's do this. List down the effect of water cycle on living things. The good effects of water cycles are Supply water to hydrate plants, humans, and animals. Enable growth of plants. It sustains life of all living organisms. Move things like nutrients, pathogens, and sediments in the aquatic ecosystem. The bad effects of water cycles are Can cause acid rain. Cause a flood to occur. Too much evaporation can lead to drought. Let's do this. Construct a model of a water cycle. Write the things that you need and the steps that you have to do. You may use dangerous or recyclable materials in your project. Water cycle. Here is an example of a water cycle project. 
Let's do this. Identify the word or words being described by each statement. Choose your answer from the box below. It is the process of changing liquid to gas. This is evaporation. It is the process when water from the plants evaporates. This is transpiration. It is the liquid part of the earth. This is hydrosphere. It is the continuous movement of water on the Earth's surface. Water cycle. The process of changing gas to liquid is condensation. Let's do this. Read each item carefully. Write through if the statement is correct and false if it is incorrect. The water cycle provides for the constant supply of fresh water on Earth. This is true. People in the community cannot live without the occurrence of the water cycle. This is true. Water cycle has both good and bad effects to living things. This is true. Water vapor condenses into tiny droplets to form clouds. This is true. The sun's energy heats water in lakes, rivers, and oceans, causing water particles to rise. This is true. Thank you for watching. Till our next science lesson. Goodbye.